Hello, Moto America fans, and welcome to this latest edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. I am Bice, and I am joined, and I'm in Central Ohio, uh, very sunny but very chilly Central Ohio. And as always, Paul, uh, except when we're at the track, is over in sunny Southern California. Um, Paul Carruthers is our communications manager. Um, Paul, how are things going? I assume it's sunny. No, it's miserable. <laughs> I, I looked out the window this morning and I'm like, am I in Ohio? There's there's no sign of sun. Monday when I got home from Road Atlanta, it was it was beautiful. I mean, like <laughs> stunning, like 80 degrees, out, not a cloud in the sky. Then it's got continually worse. And today it's uh there's no sun and it's actually it looks like it could rain, even though it's not supposed to. But it's uh yeah, it's not it's not so nice. I think we swapped space places without knowing it. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, I can't believe it. I was surprised how nice it is here, although it is pretty cold. I, it, we had some frost last night. But but anyway, I mean, people know we always have to discuss the weather just because it seems like even though we're, we're both in the United States of America, we're at almost opposite poles sometimes when it comes to temperature and all that kind of stuff. But but um, anyway, we're coming off a great weekend at Road Atlanta. I mean, it, wow, we we had six we had five, but we had six races on Saturday when you count that three. uh three lap uh, Michigan King of the Baggers challenge. So we had six on Saturday, six on Sunday. Um, we had hooligan, we had baggers, we had stock 1000 twins cup, super sport, junior cup, uh, super bike. Um, did I leave anything out? I wasn't counting with my fingers or toes. I don't, I don't but, think so. Okay. But it was one right after another. And I mean, it's crazy when it starts, you know, we get in there on Thursday, Paul, and it's always interesting, you know, we try to do a podcast there. And, uh, you know, we go around and talk to the teams. But man, once we get fired up, even with practice on Friday, but certainly Saturday and Sunday, once that racing starts, it goes so quick, and we are just so engaged in it with press conferences, and then the reports that we do afterwards. I mean, it's it's just nonstop, isn't it? Yeah, and it was kind of nice this year, we kind of got eased into it with Daytona just having two classes. Uh, actually three, I think, but, uh, but anyway, it was, it was a lot less. And then, and then we went to Coda and just had super bike. So I, we kind of got a little spoiled there with Coda because there, there wasn't a whole lot going on as far as what we had going with just the one class, you know, there was obviously a lot of MotoGP stuff that was, that was cool to keep up with and watch with, especially with our Americans in Moto2 now. So, um, yeah, but when we get to road Atlanta, man, it's, it's there, there's, you know, except for, Except for the Royal Enfield girls, uh, we don't have, we, we would have had a full slate. So we're going to see those, uh, those guys down the road a little bit. But yeah, it's, it was hectic, but I enjoy it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of addicted to motorcycle racing. So it's the more <laughs> the merrier, it just ends up being a bit more work. But it's, it's always nice to watch the races. And fortunately, our, our races are always so good. It's, uh, it, it just always it's always exciting and it, it's never boring so you know I haven't even asked you this Paul but I mean we made made a point that in that stock 1000 they only had the one race that this week past weekend and it was a 0 0.001 so it was one one thousandth of a second which is technically a millisecond we've have, we've had closer races than that haven't we I don't think I we can't get closer than that well, that's true, but I, mean, I, mean, I think I've... probably all photo finishes end up being 0.001. Yeah, that's what it is. Cause it was like, it was, it was like a wheel. It was by like by a wheel literally, but it seems like we've even had them closer than that, I guess. So. Well, not even a wheel. Know. It's like the, the rim of the, the tire on the rim, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but uh, it, it's very, it's very close. And I mean, those, those kind of finishers are really cool and that one, especially because you know, right away, there was some, you know, there was like a little hesitation while they were trying to look at the photo finish to see who actually won because they were originally they crossed the line with identical times. So, uh, yeah, we had to wait a little bit and that just built the anticipation even more. But man, what a race. It really was a good race. And, and you know, um, so Junior Cup was close too. it's interesting this season. We haven't had a lot of other makes. Yamaha was in it last year, but now it's gotten to the point where they're all Kawasaki. So it's like a spec class now for Kawasaki, just because that bike has proven to be so good over the years. So with all those riders on the same motorcycle, it's, it's kind of almost like a spec class, the way KTM junior cup was, or I'm sorry. Yeah. The KTM RC 
cup was a few years ago. And, and um, it's kind of all one make. It's not intended to necessarily be that way, but it's worked out and it's made for some, some really close racing in that class too. And um, we uh, we've got our guest today is uh, Kaylee Yakov who's from Biglerville, Pennsylvania. And I know it to be Gettysburg. She can tell us about the difference between those two. I think they're, they're pretty much the same. Um, and Kayla turned, uh, turned 14 on June 24th, turns 15 on June 24th this year, but she turned 14 last year on June 24th. And on June 25th, she raced in her first race at Ridge Motorsports Park out uh, in the Pacific Northwest. So she hasn't even been racing with us for an entire year, um, but she's done a lot in her career so far. She's um, raced in the R3 European Cup. She's done a lot of weir racing and um, she's a very accomplished racer uh, in and of herself. Um, you know, we wanted to have her on for a couple of reasons. And, you know, it's funny. I did my duly noted uh, column this for after this last round, which I'm going to be doing after every round that kind of calls out some of the interesting things that I personally saw or, or witnessed, you know, or, or things that are notable over the weekend. And a couple of fans had, had accused me of it being clickbait because I didn't mention some of the things that happened at the, at the uh, race. And, you know, we're going to acknowledge the fact that right now that, you know, Kayla was involved in that situation on, on Sunday that resulted in her getting on the podium with a third place finish. But, you know, we're going to kind of move on from that. We're not going to say a lot about it because enough's been said already. And in, in the idea of duly noted, we feel like it's been duly noted and we're not going to grill her about how she felt about that decision. You know, it was obviously emotional for her. It would be, it would be emotional for any rider. So, um, but it did for people, a lot of people know who Kayla is, but it, now it's uh, even more people know about her. And I, we thought it was a good chance to have her on and kind of talk about her career as she moves on and, and approaches a, a, you know, a full year in our series. And she's one of the front runners already. I mean, she, um, she was fourth on, well, she, she was on the podium in the second of the last race at Barber last year. And uh, she finished fourth on uh, in Saturday's race. And I want to talk to her a little bit about this. We can both discuss this, but um, she obviously had a stronger package going on Sunday, I guess. Um, and but she's obviously going to be one of the front runners and qualifies really well. So, my gosh, Kayla, I went on forever. I'm so sorry. I mean, I hope <laughs> I did, did I bore the heck out of you or what? Are you still she laughed, Sean? She already went home. <laughs> she's at it with us. I don't blame her. No, Kayla, come on in and talk to us. You, you still there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Atlanta was a good weekend for us overall. I think, you know, last year it was a big uh, difference because I, you know, last year was my first year ever racing professionally and uh, you know, and everything I've done before has just been, you know, club racing and, and things like that. So, um, you know, to come into Moto America as well as, you know, the blue crew, championship um it was definitely a big difference and uh the biggest thing that we were struggling with last year was qualifying and um you know it was it was cool to see that we improved on that uh by a lot and then obviously in q2 we improved a lot but uh, our q2 wasn't you know as as good either <laughs> um but you know going uh, into the race we knew that from last year we had decent race pace and I felt like I had good pace all weekend. So, um, you know, like I said, just to be in that front group was amazing. And it was something that we worked so hard for over the off season. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't give enough credit to the Altus Motorsports team for definitely getting me comfortable on the bike. And, uh, just to that position where I felt, you know, one with the bike and, uh, able to perform where I, I've always thought I've been able to perform. All right, let's back up a little bit because I don't know it myself. So I'm sure several listeners don't know it either, but why don't you tell us a little bit how, how you became a motorcycle racer? It's, you, I think you started at nine, which isn't entirely that young in, in this day and age. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about how this all came about? So I, th I think what you're thinking of is uh, when I started road racing, I started road racing at seven. Um, oh, okay. And, but I started racing uh, motorcycles at about three and a half. 
Um, and, and, uh, yeah, I started, I started doing flat track at three and a half and I eventually got into motocross at probably about five or six and then road racing at seven. Um, and you know, a lot of people know, but my dad raced for 15 years and, uh, it was always something that I wanted to do, um, when I was younger. So he got me a bike. We went out to a flat track, uh, race and, you know, he turned to me, he was like, do you really want to do this? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so we kind of went from there and then we got to a point where we were doing all three, you know, flat track motocross and road racing. And that's kind of where we had to make that decision. Um, because obviously dad wouldn't be as happy <laughs> if we were doing all three at the same time. So, um, you know. We, I picked road racing and it's kind of gone our way, I'd say. Um, I think it was a pretty good decision, but uh, yeah, I started racing at about three and a half. I actually did go-karts first, um, but I didn't like it as much. So then we went into uh, racing motorcycles, but it's gone pretty good. Well, I just to let you know, Sean was still wearing diapers at three and a half. So you're ahead of him. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There's no way I went anywhere near a motorcycle at that time. But, you know, Kayla, I remember you seeing you on social media and reading about you and you can tell us about this, but you have a track right at your house. Am I right? And it's paved, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. How, how is that possible? I mean, what is it, how long is it? Is it a true, is it like a turn track, like an actual road course? And is it just on your land? And how, how did, how did that come to happen? So yeah, my, uh, you know, when my mom and dad were looking for a property when I was younger, my dad always wanted, you know, a track. He always wanted something that was close because living kind of in our part of Pennsylvania, we don't have a lot of uh, tracks near us. And, uh, uh, you know, I think the closest track is at least two or three hours away, um, which isn't bad, but, you know, that's only one or two tracks that I can really think of. But, um, you know, he always dreamed of having a, you know, road course around his house. And uh, so we got a property with a, enough land to do it. And I think it's about half mile, about a half mile. Um, and depending on the configuration you want to do, because we have a few crossover roads uh, that you can use, um, you know, the, the track that I usually did is like about nine corners. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really cool. I ride my supermoto on it a lot. Um, and I used to ride my, my old 150R on it. I crashed that thing so many times. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. The only thing about, you know, living in Pennsylvania is we live in Pennsylvania and, <laughs> you know, there. um, and even right now the weather's super bipolar. I mean, we we'll get, one day is like 80 degrees and then the next day it's like, you know, 52. And then it's like, okay, well, this isn't very fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, we get rain a lot. And then obviously in the winters we get snow. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really cool. And uh, my dad, I think he told me he um, only rode the track like three or four times. And um you know, now I'm riding it a lot. And uh, I think I've been putting it to good use. You know, it's funny, you'll, you'll appreciate this. When we moved to Ohio uh, several years ago, um, the road that goes between where we live east of Columbus and Columbus, where I used to commute to, um, along the way, there was a basic it was like a, a bunch of farmland that somebody bought and turned into a golf course and at the time we knew that the highway that went between Columbus and and Granville where I live uh was going to be turned into like a more of a not really an interstate but a four-lane deal um you know two lanes on either side so I knew that they were going to take some of that land where this golf course was being built so I thought it was really odd that somebody built a golf course that we knew was probably not going to last more than a couple of years. And it almost felt like they tried to raise the value of the land in order to, um, when they sold it, you know, because they actually had a business there. But let me get to the point that, that when I would go by where that golf course was, they had a paved cart track there and it went all over these hills and all around. And, and when they closed the golf course, I thought, oh my God, I, that would be so cool. It's almost like a, it's all this circuitous track that ribbons all over these fields and around. And I thought, 
my gosh, I could get my YSR 50 out there and run it around. And, and now that's all changed. You can still see the path, but it's all overgrown a little bit. But I, I kind of thought of you, I was like, man, I could have had a course, uh, a road course there, but, but this thing was pretty narrow. Like I said, it was about as narrow as a, a cart path. Yours is yours like a properly fairly wide track. And do you have like runoff and gravel and everything? No. So our track is, um, because my dad actually raced go-karts as well. So, uh, it's, it's probably, I don't know, uh, maybe 15 feet long, 15, 20 feet, you know, wide. Um, and I mean, it's, you could say it's pretty narrow, especially compared to like the tracks that we race in, you know, in, in Moto America, but, um, you know, it's, it's like a pretty good golf or not golf cart, um, go court, go cart yeah. track. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's really cool. I mean, there's tons of elevation change and, uh, kind of, you know, a bit of everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've had, I've had my teammate now, Brandon Posh come out and, uh, and ride it with me. Um, still haven't gotten Gus rodeo out. He's <laughs> I thought I've talked to him before. Um, but the thing about, you know, the bigger bikes on kind of the smaller tracks is that it tears up the pavement a little bit that's the only thing you know I know if he came out with you know him and Brandon with the 450s I think that would be a you know a bit a bit of a beating to the track but you know it's uh it's good I like it a lot it's it's pretty fun especially on the 125 uh is what my supermoto is um it's it's really fun Okay, so I don't, I, I can't even remember this is off the top of my head, but at 14 years old, what grade are you in? Ninth, I mean, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. So you go to high school, first year of high school. Yep. Uh, you're not homeschooled though, are you? Or do you actually go to school? I go online school. Oh, okay. That works out. So yeah, I, I, question, I'm, go ahead. Really? Yeah. So the kids that you know uh, in your neighborhood or or whatever do they do they do they, are they aware of what you do and how successful you are yeah so uh when i went into school this is actually my first full year doing online school um you know aside from everything that happened with covid but um you know uh when i was going to my middle school we had this uh, one Christmas assembly, and it was one of, when one of my uh, videos on YouTube came out for uh, kind of like a pitch thing, uh, and uh, it was really cool. You know, my whole school was so supportive of it, and you know, some of my teachers still email me uh, about you know my racing, my you know my if they could get some like shirts and hats and things. Um, but yeah, they played one of my videos at the at the Christmas assembly, which was pretty cool. So uh, you know a lot of people in my area um, that go to my school kind of uh, know what I do, obviously not to the extent that a lot of other people do, but uh, it's pretty cool. Okay. So I got to ask you this too. Basically you're a girl in a boy's sport. Does that mean do you, are most of your friends, do you find that probably boys, right? I mean, from our paddock, et cetera, other junior cup racers. Yeah, most of them are, I mean, obviously, girls here and there that that race or, or hang out in the paddock but a, you know a majority of my friends are, are are racers too yeah kayla um you know so paul talked about you being online and all that and we've seen that qu quite a bit and mm -hmm. i even told you that uh um it's interesting that when i was with yamaha i remember when garrett gerloff was being homeschooled and that that his education was so important really to him and his, to his family and it's interesting that, you know, he's 31 and so are you. And I know that you visited him when you were over in Europe um, doing that R3 European Cup stuff. So, um, I, how, well, this wasn't what I was going to ask you, but now that I mention it, why are you number 31? Um, so when I was younger, um, kind of how this is kind of how I got into it. But uh, when my dad raced, he always used the number 31 and uh, it's always been a number that I've liked a lot. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the big motive behind why I chose the number 31. Um, but like I said, I, I like the number a lot too. And it kind of makes it easier if, you know, you ever do win as you just kind of <laughs> um, put the three aside. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's really good. And that's actually what Garrett used to say, too, is like, just remove that three and you're good to go there. So um, but uh, I want to I want to talk again about your school. And this is kind of for personal reasons, because my wife is an eighth grade language arts teacher. And, um, you know, she she uh, I've got been around that age group of kids a lot. I've gone into her classroom and talked to kids and you're you're a year older than that. But um, now that you're doing online because you, you sort of have to a little bit. Um, compare that to being in school because it's tough. I mean, I know these kids that are homeschooled, you, you kind of lose touch with your age group a little bit. And I know you get it in the paddock with racing and everything, but it's pretty important to have uh, peers your age that you hang around with. So do you, at this point, I guess you're, you're in ninth grade and you're older now. So you kind of are get, becoming a, a young lady and are pretty, set, maybe not set in your ways, but you know what you're up doing. You don't maybe need to have, well, you certainly don't have to have play dates like younger kids do to get them together. But how do you deal with the fact that it's, you don't, you're not in a classroom anymore? What's that transition been like? Yeah, well, uh, like I said, I mean, this is my first full year online and um, obviously there are the the really good things about it, like uh, if I'm racing one weekend, I can, you know, do my work the next week or do it the week prior so that, you know, I it's a bit asynchronous so I can, you know, kind of have a bit of flexibility. Um, but obviously being in a classroom and being involved is um, definitely a lot easier in some aspects. But going with, you know, the people in my grade, um, when I went to school, I, you know, I had a bunch of friends that, you know, did either motocross and things like that. Uh, and then some, some of just my personal friends, but yeah, I still talk to a lot of them. Um, obviously it's been hard and it's hard to plan things with my schedule, um, because we're just hopping around a lot, but, uh, yeah, I still get to see my friends every once in a while. That's good. And the other thing I want to mention too, regarding your age is, so every year at the end of the year, the, 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 uh, my wife's grade, they actually take a, a field trip. And wouldn't you know it, they go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And it's funny because I know you as being from Biglerville, as I mentioned at the top of the podcast. And then I see you mentioned as, as Gettysburg. I've been to Gettysburg a few times. I love that area. I don't remember Biglerville, but what is it? Right? Is it right there? I mean, why don't I know that town? It's like right next to Gettysburg. It's, it's I technically... Like my dad's house is technically right on like the border of Biglerville and Gettysburg. So it's like, I will just say Biglerville because it's kind of right there. But yeah, I go, I've always gone to school in Gettysburg and like the Gettysburg area school district. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like it here a lot. That's obviously my dad was going to go to a place where it was pretty quiet and um, we had a bit of a, you know, a bit of space so that we wouldn't have to worry about neighbors, um, which is something that he had to worry about before when he would ride his, uh, his dirt bikes in the fields at, at our old house, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so I grew up in New York state and obviously when I was a kid, we would go to Gettysburg. And I remember I probably went to Gettysburg when I was your age. And I have to admit openly that I have much more of a, a, a love for history as I've gotten older than I maybe did then. I appreciate it a little bit, but it was like a subject you had to study in school. So maybe because it was something in school, I didn't really embrace it quite as much. But I mean, you were literally there. And when I've been in Gettysburg before and you'd ask somebody like, you know, where is the battlefield? And they would go, well, you're standing on the battlefield. The entire town of Gettysburg was a battlefield then. Do you do you have a pretty good understanding of the history of Gettysburg? And do you, I mean, you're, it's, it's an, it's a national, it's a national treasure, obviously that, that area and what that meant to this country. Um, do you have a, a grasp of that? What that's all about? Yeah. I mean, obviously in our schools, that's, you know, kind of the biggest thing. Our school is literally right by like right next to the battlefield. So <laughs> we can walk, you know, 30 feet and be on the battlefield from our school or from at least the, you know, our middle school. And, um, you know, it's, we're, you know, right where my mom lives too. We live like right, right in town. So it's, it's really cool uh, to be surrounded by the history. But like I said, with school, that's kind of the focus on, on a lot of, um, you know, social studies and, and history lessons is, you know, kind of through, the details of the battle and where things happened. And it's really cool because 
we can actually physically go to these places because we're, you know, in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. I, I think it's really cool. I used to go to a lot of like the museums in town and the, you know, historic places a lot when I was younger and we just kind of hang out there and do uh, the course, but it's pretty cool. Hey, I just got to jump on one thing real quick before Paul has a question for you, Kayla, but I got to bring this up. And I think this is something that might resonate with you at your age, but it scares me a little, but I will tell you this. We talk about a fair amount that there's a lot, there are a lot of ghosts in that area. I mean, it just is a known fact. I, I have witnessed a situation where we were at one part of the battlefield and we, and there were some guys dressed up in Confederate uniforms down by a little round, round top and we went down there and they were gone. And then we asked, are there reenactors going on? And they said, no, that's not going on. And so I don't know what I saw, but we've heard other stories in that area. I, mean, I know you know some of the, the ghost stories, I'm sure. Are, tell us about any of that that you know. Do you have any ghosts in your house? You know? Yeah, so basically, you know, we walk around town, especially in the summertime. You get a lot of uh, people around this, you know, in town that dress up. And obviously, uh, if they're doing tours, the 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 guides will dress up. Um, but you'll see a lot of people in, you know, Confederate or Union uniforms a lot. Um, and a lot of our, you know, restaurants here, too, are seen that way. So people will dress up there. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, I've heard, I've heard a bunch of stories like that where they're like, I've seen, you know, a gray figure in the in the trees and you know the tree line <laughs> you know you you can believe some of it I mean there are definitely houses here that I think um you know obviously there's crazy stuff that has happened in in our town but yeah I mean for me personally when I was younger I thought I saw something in my dad's house um you know but I, you know, I was also like seven, so I could have, could have just made that up and tried to convince myself I saw something to be cool. But, um, you know, it's, it's cool to, to hear other people's like, um, experiences here because, you know, like I said, we live like right in the middle of it. And I've been to like a lot of the houses and like kind of places where, you know, there have been crazy things that have happened. And, you know, with history, there's, all these, you know, the, like the bloody battles of Gettysburg and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and I've seen some of the ghost shows too, when they come to Gettysburg and, then I, and I watch some of the stuff and it's just like, eh, I don't know how much, how accurate that is, but whatever. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to motorcycles. Yeah, let's do it. You ready, Sean or not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Kayla, you obviously have taken to motorcycle racing and it sounds like racing of different kinds since you started in go-karts. What, what is, what's your favorite part? Is it, is it the speed? Is it competing? I think with you, it might be the brakes because you're pretty good on the, on the brakes, but uh, what, what part of it is, is you find the most enjoyable? Yeah. I mean, competing is awesome. I mean, going into the season, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to race. I wanted to get to Atlanta. And uh, obviously when I got there, I was like, okay, well now we're here, but um, you know, it, I like the, the adrenaline, the speed, um, being around people that, you know, you can actually talk to off the track too. Just like having that racing family is really nice. Um, and then obviously racing them all is really cool too, but there are a lot of things in, in motorcycle racing that, that I love. Now you've been accepted obviously by the other guys in the class. Uh, and I think the acceptance comes from the fact that they know how good you are and they see how good you are. You, I mean, coming into our paddock and racing against the guys, do you, has there been any issues or is it, is it, it's kind of open arms and everyone's welcomed you? Yeah, I think to me, it's been all open arms. You know, obviously you have the people that, you know, don't, that kind of doubt you in the, in the beginning and you kind of screw yourself. But a lot of the people that, you know, I'm racing with now, I've, you know, I've raced with for a really long time and uh, I grew up racing with. So it's, uh, it's cool to race, you know, with, with people like that again. But, uh, you know, it depends on who you go up to, but I, I feel like I've kind of earned my spot here and, and I've, I've proven that I'm here to stay. 
Kayla, I got to ask you this question. So we have a thing called, uh, well, it's the Discord server and it's the motorcycle Discord server. And we've been promoting it a lot, but we've, it's a community of people that just kind of get together and, you know, have conversations about everything from racing to motorcycles of any kind to show us your bike to if you have a question and one of the things that's happened recently is you know we've had some people you never know who these people are you just see their kind of their their handle or whatever and I didn't realize there was one person I was talking to who turned it, he kind of let it be known that he was in high school because he said hey I'll get back to you after third period and I knew what he was talking about so he was asking me questions like mm -hmm. which which bike to buy and, you know, all these kind of things. And, and even like, how do you know when to shift? And I'm like, some of that stuff, it's hard for me to explain because a lot of it's by feel or once you ride, you just do it. But I have to ask you, it's something I've always wondered because, you know, I've been riding motorcycles my whole life and um, I didn't really race. I did some track, I've done track days and stuff, but you're so young still the mechanics of riding a motorcycle, the gears, the usage of the clutch, the throttle, you, is that become second nature to you? And do you, you know, you guys, even in junior cup, I never see anybody loop out on the starting line or stall it or anything like that. I mean, you're, you're very talented and very adept at what you do with the mechanics of riding a motorcycle, even at your young age. Um, does it, why is that? I mean, do you ever think about those things when you're riding? Yeah, I've definitely thought about it before. It's, you know, when I just kind of sat down and, and thought about my riding, it's kind of like, you know, I'm doing all these things at once and I'm not really thinking about it, which is uh, kind of crazy to think about because that's something that I learned. That's, you know, the basics I learned when I was really young. And uh, now it just comes as, you know, you get on the bike and you go um, and you try to go fast. But yeah, I mean, talking about the Discord server too, I've actually popped in there a few times and Read, read some of the chats but uh yeah I mean, it's uh what's your handle kayla do you have one I, it's just my name i, I, I don't know you okay I, I haven't really i haven't really uh said too much on there i kind of just observe and and see what other people are saying i've seen trevor standish in there a few times yes um, but yeah i just uh, i pop in every once in a while check the check what people are saying see the latest news <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the discord so yeah, yeah. And there's one guy steven 789 he raced in twins cup at, at road atlanta and uh you know there were a few other people that came to watch him race and we all we all sort of got together we should have grabbed you too but we we had a little bit of uh you know because some of these people you don't know what they look like even and you know it's always that case that some of the people i met it's like oh my gosh i had no idea that person would look like that or they'd be that age or whatever and we had a good time but they spent a little bit of time around uh steven smith who is this uh, uh, twins cup riders. So that's cool that, that you're in there too. But I mean, it's, it's just interesting. Do you think, I mean, I know when my son was younger, you know, they always said, if you wanted to learn a language or anything, anything you, it's better to learn it when you're young, because you pick up stuff a lot better than you do when you're older. Do you think that's the case with motorcycles too? I mean, you, you learned how to ride at such a young age that you kind of got that down and it's not even something now that you, you know, it's, it's second nature to you, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think that definitely you learn so much more, especially from a young age um, and kind of absorb it all when you're younger. So, I mean, I think that my comfortableness on, on the bike, I think that's a word, I, I, um, on the bike is definitely thanks to starting younger and um, just having that feeling, like I talked about before, of being one with the bike comes with comfort. And that's probably the biggest thing for a rider and uh, to be able to feel that connection to where as soon as you sit on the bike, you know, you're ready to go. What kind of training do you do at, at your age? Are you trying to work on your core or strength? Um, are you trying to do things that just up your heart rate? And, you know, what exactly are you working on? Because you're still obviously growing. And there are a lot of things that I do um, to kind of just get me where where I want to be, obviously, with being a girl, it's a lot different, too. You have to kind of work around a few things um, and, and work on certain certain muscles. But, um, you know, I, I'm just I'm chipping away at it. We're not going to give away too much because uh, we have closed information. And uh, no, but I'm, I'm happy where I'm at right now. Hopefully we can keep improving our fitness. I think there was definitely a big uh, 
a big step from Barber to Atlanta that we made in, in my overall fitness. So uh, we're going to keep chipping away at it. Hopefully it, it pays off very well. Well, it seems like it's showing. I mean, you definitely uh, put yourself in the window, so to speak, last year and certainly at Barber. But this year, I mean, I, I know this was the first weekend for Junior Cup, but um, you did real well. I do want to ask you a question about something that um, I can't remember with all everything that went on over the weekend. I honestly can't remember the situation, but you were DQ'd in the second qualifying session. What what happened? Yeah, <laughs> when, I, when I asked my dad about it, uh, when I asked for, you know, what, what does he think about it? He's like, oh, I was just stupid. I made a stupid mistake. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, we, we went out in Q2. I'll just go over the, the session first because that was kind of the biggest thing is, uh, you know, all last year, like I said, I was working on my qualifying and I could not find a group. I was always, go, always by myself and we always, you know, I was always too nice kind of in my qualifying, never really put myself in a good position. And I finally did it. I finally put myself in a good position. We were sat in P3. We come in. We're all happy. We're like, oh, this is going to be so cool. We're going to be front row. And then, nope, <laughs> you're one pound underweight. Oh, and I was, I was like, oh, man. So, um, you know, our morning session was at 8 a.m. So no one really, I, for me personally, I didn't think that everyone was going to go faster, but we all ended up going a lot faster, um, which actually kind of got me worried since, you know, being underweight, our, our time got DQ'd. Um, I was I was worried that my qualifying position from the day prior wouldn't be good enough to get me at least on the front free, three rows. And uh, we got we got lucky. We you know stayed in in seventh place, um, which wasn't you know that's still my best qualifying that I've had. And uh, last year you know my best qualifying was tenth, so it's still an improvement. Um, not obviously what we wanted, but it's, it was, it was good, but, you know, just one pound underweight got DQ'd, not, you know, wasn't super happy about it, but I knew that, you know, we had more for the race and, uh, we could stay in that pack. Yeah. And I'm glad you reminded me. That's right. Okay. Now this is something I definitely wanted to ask you because yes, you were underway and not by much. Um, we heard it was, well, Jason, our uh, timing and scoring guy said, you just should have had one more pancake at breakfast. Not that you had pancakes for breakfast, but that was the point you wanted to make. But I talked to Chris Oliveira about it, who is Alexis Oliveira's uh, dad and Alexis is super Lex. She's raced in junior cup in the past. Now she's transitioned to doing videos and doing a very good job with that. But he told me, and tell me if this is uh, the case with you, Kayla. He said in, in a given day, she would actually, her weight would fluctuate like 15 pounds in a day. Is that, is that crazy? That, yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm relaxed. I've known, you know, Lexi and, uh, and Chris for a while um, because we used to race at the Herons together. And, um, you know, I, for me, I could see that my weight fluctuates a bit. 15 pounds is crazy to me. That that's a lot. That's like, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a few, that's a lot of weights. If you, you know, if yeah, you're, it is. yeah, it is <laughs> 15 pounds are a lot of weights that you got to put in the bike. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's a lot. I think for me, it's maybe like five pounds. It will fluctuate over a weekend that, and that's like a stretch, but yeah, I mean, it happens a lot. And especially since like, you know, you're burning so many calories on the bike and our sessions are fairly long. It's, um, you know, and you're also running around throughout the day. Uh, you definitely burn a lot of calories and then to recover, you know, and, and take the time to kind of build that muscle back again. It's, uh, you know, it fluctuates a bit. You know, you said something about when you qualify that I wanted people to understand a little bit. You had talked about getting with a group. What does that mean? Yeah. So especially in classes that, you know, you have uh, less power to, you know, a super bike, um, having um, a draft and having a tow is so important because it's so hard on tracks where you have long straightaways to do a time by yourself and not lose anything on a straightaway. And obviously having draft, you're, you know, decreasing the amount of wind that you have coming towards you. And, you know, obviously the more wind, the slower you'll go on straightaway. So to be able to be in a group 
And to catch that draft makes a huge difference, especially at a track like Road Atlanta, where you have that really long back straightaway. Um, it makes such a big difference. And, you know, with Junior Cup, too, you know, all our times are so close. So, you know, a few tenths here and there is a lot. And uh, if you're able to get that with a toe, then it's very, very much worth it. Sean, you need to watch Moto3 qualifying in, from Europe yeah. because, I mean, they they sit around and wait. I mean, it's ridiculous, some of the stuff. I know you've seen it, Caleb, but, I mean, they'll sit around and ride offline and ride online, and they're barely moving, waiting for that pack to come through. But they've really started to clamp down on that because it actually gets to the point where it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, we have – there are a few people that I know I know of in Junior Cup that, that do that a lot. Um, and – you know, if it's necessary, it's necessary. I mean, obviously don't do it in line. That's, that's the worst thing that you can do. But, um, you know, I see it a lot in Moto3, like you said, I, a lot of people did it in Blue Crew. I mean, that was, that was pretty bad. They were, you know, sitting online. I remember a few times at Aston where, uh, I did get in a, that big group once and, um, you know, I, that was probably the most sketchy qualifying session I've ever been in. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's so important, especially on the little bikes to have that toe and, you know, without it, it's just so difficult to, to have a good qualifying. You know, we're running out of time here a little bit, Kayla, but I do want to mention a couple of things. Um, so yeah, you, you touched on the, the R3 cup last year. So you raced in the, uh, the Yamaha R3 European Cup, I don't know what order that's actually in the Blue Crew Cup, and on a Yamaha R3 in a, in a spec class with riders all over the world. And you, uh, it was, it's been interesting to see this year, uh, like for instance, that, that series raced the same time we were at uh, Road Atlanta. And I think the next time they race is when we're gonna be at VIR, it just, they do it in coordination with um, World Superbike. And I, just from following Garrett Gerloff, we kind of know, so you're not doing that cup this year, but it was interesting last year how it was like this massive horde of all these riders that got together. And junior cup is kind of like that this year too, with them being all Kawasaki 400s. But um, that that junior cup, there that R three cup that you did last year, how did that help you? I, I'm sure the extra seat time and track time helped, but being in those groups, it's it's got to help you going forward for this year and any even beyond in your career. Um, tell us about what you got out of that last year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, like I said, um, it was my first year ever racing professionally and I hadn't even been out of the country yet. Um, and also not, not even been to half of the Moto America tracks. And, um, you know, it was, it was kind of crazy getting that call uh, from the American racing guys and, and them getting me over there and, and doing that cup. It was kind of crazy and definitely like a surreal, surreal experience, but um, you know, the way they ride over there is so much different and especially, you know, different from what I had saw, saw, you know, seen in, um, you know, club racing, it was just different and, uh, you know, racing in, in these huge groups and of these like super aggressive guys and, you know, everyone has the uh, hunger to win and it's, you know, not that people here don't have that, but it's just all these teenagers that are just ready to battle and you know bump and hit and just ready to go and uh it it was really cool and I think that a lot of the stuff that I learned over there I'm kind of absorbing into my riding now and it's not as much of a you know a shock now it's kind of just like okay I see what they're doing and I'm gonna try to apply this now to my riding and uh like I said I had the whole off season to kind of focus on that and focus on what they were doing differently. Same for the kids here in Moto America, focus on what they were doing differently and kind of try to apply that to, to myself. But, you know, that whole experience was so cool, racing on some of those tracks with the World Superbike guys. Um, it was just a really cool experience. You know, the funny thing is too, that last, so last year you raced with BartCon Racing, this year with Alt your Altus Motorsports. So you, as you mentioned, you've got uh, 
Brandon Posh is your teammate, um, as well as Jarrett Nassani, Justin Jones. Um, and that's a that's an obviously a good, a really good team. They've won the past two stock 1000 championships and they've got a good footprint in the paddock. So it's cool that you're with those guys, but your former team. So this year, uh, Colin Barton from Barton Racing has got Levy Batty from Belgium racing in Junior Cup. And he was on track with you this weekend and he out, he put it on the pole. Uh, in his first race in the U.S. And lo and behold, he was in our three uh, cup racer last year. So you you know Levy pretty well, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, last year it was pretty cool, you know, racing with Levy. Uh, you know, both of us were kind of, uh, you know, in our lone country and kind of representing ourselves. And, um, you know, I talked to him a bit over there. We had some uh, pretty cool races. It, it was actually pretty cool to hear him come over here uh, because he, you know, me and him always qualify together, you know, within the same like three or three to five positions. And uh, we would race, race together a lot and uh, have some pretty good battles. And uh, to hear him coming over here was a, a really cool thing. And uh, obviously racing with him again at Atlanta and uh, us training some passes together was a, a pretty cool thing. So, I got one more question for you. And I wanted to ask you about this because I talked to your dad a little bit. So this past weekend, um, you got uh, fourth in, on Saturday, but you seem to be in a group. You talk, talk about in qualifying being in a group. Well, sometimes you don't really want to be in a group when you're in, in a race because you can get shuffled back in the order pretty quick. And you were, you were going to podium or it looked like you were, you were absolutely going to be there in that Saturday race. But I was surprised. I talked to your dad and he readily, um, gave me information that there was something not quite right with the bike and it seemed like it made a difference on Sunday. Can you, can you tell us what that was Kayla? Yeah. Well, uh, in, in Saturday's race, you know, we, we stayed to that front of the group. Uh, I noticed that at the end of the straightaways, uh, you know, our gearing was not exactly perfect and they were just kind of swallowing me up even in draft at the end of the straightaways, which, you know, going into, 10a I was decent on the brakes but if I'm too far back it's just so hard to to stick that front wheel in there and you know without you know running into someone so um you know like I said I tried to stay to the front of that group those last few laps um there were a few passes that were made that kind of broke the two groups apart I was able to kind of catch them on the last lap um but obviously it was a bit too far um out of my striking distance to to get all of them into, <laughs> into 10 a, but, um, yeah, I mean, we, we made a, a gearing change for, for race two and it, it definitely worked out. All right, Sean, you done there, buddy. Yeah. That was the big thing is the fact that, I mean, listen to Kayla sitting here talking about how, you know, she needs a gearing change in her bike. And I mean, I've written stories about explaining what gearing is with the teeth on the sprocket and all that kind of stuff. And, and here she completely understands it. Um, and by the way, she will be 15 on June 24th. And Kayla, one thing that's not lost on me that you and I, even though I don't really believe in this that much, but I have to point out, you and I are born under the same uh, zodiac sign. We're both cancers. And so we're both uh, emotional. We both are very loving and we both love to be home. Is that, is that true about you? <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm probably emotional because of my mom. That's probably where I get that. Um, and I mean, I don't do the, the astrology stuff. I know a lot of people that are my age, um, especially girls that do that. I, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not as much into that, but, uh, yeah, I, I feel like I'm a little bit emotional and that, but like in a good way, not, not as much as a way. Um, but I do like being outside. That's the only difference. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. All right, Kayla. It's been, it's been a pleasure having you. I, everyone feels badly about how Sunday turned out. And, you know, I was ready to, to get ready to say that you were the first female racer to ever win one of our junior cup races. Uh, so it, it was difficult to not get to be able to say that, but I can honestly say that that's going to happen this year. So yeah. I, it'll all be water under the bridge when that does happen. And I also have a feeling, I think your, your career will go beyond junior cup. And maybe one day we'll even get to call you the first female racer to win one of our superbike races, which would be outstanding. But 
you're on a trajectory to to move up and and go through the different classes until going as far as you want to go i guess so i appreciate uh having you on the show i appreciate how intelligent and smart you are and how well spoken and i think you're a positive very positive influence on our sport and i, I look forward to working with you for for many years to come but uh thanks for joining us and and sean thank you for uh you know, getting her to speak about the history of her hometown and ghosts <laughs> and whatever else we discussed. But uh, I enjoyed it and it was fun. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys uh, both in a few more weeks. Sounds great. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Bye-bye.